Today is Tuesday, and that means I'm going to be talking about a new movie that I saw over the weekend. And the new movie I'm going to be talking about that I saw over the 4th of July weekend, that movie was The Forever Purge. This movie feels like it's the 10th installment in the franchise, so I feel like I don't need to rehash everything that's been going on in the previous films, so I won't. So I'm going to keep this review very short. So in a nutshell, Murder and Mayhem is legal for one night only. However, in this movie, they decided to make it ongoing. So when that alarm goes off the next morning and everything's supposed to return back to normal, it does not. People are still murdering and pillaging and doing everything that they want to. However, this is not just an isolated incident. The murder mayhem is taking place nationwide. However, the Mexican border and the Canadian border are actually accepting refugees for sanctuary. The good thing our main characters are in Texas because they decided to make a run to the Mexican border for sanctuary. I'll be completely honest, I had very low expectations when it came to this movie, just because the previous films, I would say the last three or four movies that I had seen of this franchise, I did not really enjoy that much, and they came off as very preachy and very political. However, I was pleasantly surprised. The movie was very political, however, it wasn't overly preachy. It wasn't on the nose on everything, so I did enjoy that, and I didn't feel like I was being lectured the whole time while watching the movie. In the first few moments of the movie, when I thought the movie was truly going to suck, we're introduced to one of the main characters who's actually one of the ranch hands on the property. And I really thought the movie was going to suck because there was a cheesy moment with the music. And someone announces from across the way, they say, that's a real cowboy right there. And all of a sudden he lowers his hat and you hear that. When I heard that, I was like, Bruh! I started chuckling really loud. And I think I was the only one in the audience chuckling really loud at that part. However, the movie made up for it because I felt like the main characters of the film were actually likable characters and they were portrayed very well. Also, the movie kind of showed you something that I'd never really noticed in any of the Purge movies before, since they always take place in one night, is the aftermath. We actually get to see someone walking to work the very next day. We get to see blood on the floor. We get to see broken glass, bullets, dead bodies, and blood splatter all over the walls. And we actually get to see like the news reports talking about the cleanup and all how they're going to do with all the waste and everything. So I actually thought that part was very cool because that was actually something I was always very curious about. Something about this movie that I liked more than any of the other ones was actually that this movie, the villains in the movie were actually not cartoony. They weren't comic booky looking. They weren't, they wouldn't have the typical, you know, girl with the mask skipping down the street holding a machete. They kind of cut that out. It was actually more realistic looking. You still had people in masks. However, they weren't very overly decorated or anything. They weren't in any super theatrics or anything going with it. It was actually a little more realistic. It kind of reminded me of something you would see like in a Mad Max film. And it looked more apocalyptic. So I was actually kind of digging that vibe. It kind of felt more real and less comic booky. What I liked about this movie is that it didn't feel like a Purge movie. And I mean that in a good way is since it's not taking place for one night only, it's kind of continuing on. Uh, it kind of just felt like an apocalyptic movie or like a beginning of an apocalyptic movie. So I thought that was cool. And I, what made this movie stick out more than any of the other ones is that the cast was actually really good and they were actually likable characters. Even some characters that you didn't like in the beginning of the movie, they kind of redeemed themselves with their arc later on in the movie. I won't go into any spoilers on who, but they actually have better characters that I felt like in this film than any of the previous films. Also, it was really great seeing a lot of Hispanic actors in the movie. It's something we don't see very often, and I was really happy to see them on the screen. I thought, all right, about time. Unfortunately, I was like, why do they have to be the immigrants? But whatever, but I was like, hey, at least they're kicking some ass in this movie. So I was like, you know what, good for them. Ana de la Greta's character I thought was very cool and I felt like her character made up way for more than what she did in Army of the Dead. I thought her character was very cool and actually a lot more interesting and I had a bigger backstory. Unfortunately, we don't get really much of that backstory, but I was like, hey, she definitely redeemed herself in this movie compared to what she did in Army of the Dead. So I was like, good for her, good job. As far as negatives go about this movie, you know, it's still political. It's not in your face like as the previous installments were. Uh, so I did appreciate that. It was still political, but like I said, it's not in your face the whole time. Someone's not yelling at you through the entire movie. Um, but unfortunately with this movie, I feel like it should have showed up in the franchise three sequels ago. Uh, unfortunately, it came way too late in the series. So as far as another negative about this movie, since it's so late in the series and so late in the franchise, the suspense and the whole buildup, unfortunately, it's not there because... We're already desensitized with these movies, so it's already came in here way too late. So everything that's supposed to be suspenseful is not that suspenseful. 
while watching this movie and the subject matter, could not stop thinking about another movie that had a lot more suspense, less of a budget, and a way smaller cast. And that movie was Desierto. As far as suspense goes and the subject matter, that movie has it for sure. Supposedly, this is the last entry of the franchise. I don't see that really happening. But while watching this movie now, I was thinking if this is the last one, this franchise has missed out on so many opportunities. I was thinking, I was like, why hasn't there been a movie about like someone that doesn't have a home? Why not have a, a purge movie about someone that's homeless and they have nowhere to go, they have nowhere to turn to, and they're stuck in the street during the purge night? I was like, why hasn't that happened yet? Or has it? I don't know. Do you need to see this movie in the theater? Probably not. You can even rent this movie and you can still get a kick out of it. It's an action-packed movie with not a whole lot of suspense, but it's pretty entertaining. And like I said, it's politicalized, but it's not overly political like the previous installments were. So I would definitely check it out as a rental if you wanted to, or if you get a cheap matinee, I would check it out that way too. Regal has uh, cheap discounts on Sundays for Regal members. AMC, they have cheap Tuesdays. So if you want to see it in the theaters, see it on any of those theaters if you're a Regal or AMC stubs holder. I would give The Forever Purge a C+. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully, if you like what you see, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'm Mike the Movie Misfit, and I'll see you at the movies. I forgot to ask my assistants what they thought about the movie. Okay, they could care less. Whatever. I'll see you at the movies. Get more out of life. Go out to a movie.